Hello there again, everybody. This is going to be Jund League number 70 on the YouTube. Um, if you're not already subscribed, you definitely should because this is League number 70, meaning there are already 69 other leagues plus some extras already posted. So be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if this is the kind of stuff you like to see. Uh, this particular list is is very closely related to a recent Aspiring Spike list. Aspiring Spike is another um, streamer slash recorder. Um, he's a pretty prolific streamer as well. Um, he's definitely one of the more popular ones out there. So if you haven't seen him, check him out. He makes some really great content. Um, this, this list is about five or six cards different than a list that he played a few days ago on his stream. And the only real reason why it's not a card for card duplicate is because I've got Mana Traders Gold and uh, I'm about 20 tickets short of completing the deck so I just cut basically 20 tickets worth of cards in as, in as few spots as possible. I, I wanted to keep most of his core pieces together um, but I mean other than just like the few uh, corner case cards um, th this is his list um, and then for reference um, this is his complete list so he's playing an extra season Pyromancer he's not playing a third Blood Braid I own Blood Braid so I, could, I was able to make that swap He's playing two trophies, um, a card I'm not traditionally high on. I'm playing one trophy and one decay, because again, I had to make some cuts for Mana Traders purposes. He's playing a, sp a split of three Thoughtseize, three Inquisition. I'm playing four Inquisition, two Thoughtseize, again, because of Mana Traders considerations. Uh, and I think that's it for the main deck. Um, funky things he's doing with lands. He's playing one of each Psycho Land and Black and Red to combo with the Ren and Six. He's also got a Smoldering Marsh and no Raging Ravine, which is interesting. He's got a copy of Clothis in the main. Um, I also have one in the main today. Um, I do not have one, the Clothis in the sideboard, and I do not have the Boil in the sideboard. Additionally, he's got a Thoughtseize in the sideboard, um, which I do not have. Um, my swaps for those three sideboard card slots that I'm missing are just two Plague Engineers and one Nile Spellbomb. Uh, my, my first impressions of this list, uh, Spike obviously, well not obviously, um, if, if you didn't catch his stream when he did this, um, he had a pretty solid record. I believe he went a combined 11 and 4 over three leagues, which is pretty good. I know two, two of them were four ones, and the other, I guess, was a 3 2. So, pretty solid record with the list, very similar to this. I'm just going to try it out and see how it feels. Um, a lot of these um, cards would not be my first choice, but Spike is another person with a lot of experience, and I always like to try out differing opinions, even if uh, they may not be similar to my own, because who knows, maybe I'm wrong, or maybe Spike's got something going. Um, three copies of Gargaroth. I'm actually really, I think this is the card that I'm most excited to play um, in this particular league. Um, five mana is a lot. We're playing the 20, full, full 24 lands to get there, and um, playing Ren and Six to help hit those land drops is definitely important for lands uh, to, to be able to play Gargaroth, mostly on curve. Um, uh, things like my, my usual decks don't play the Ren and Sixes, at least right now, but if there's a payoff at five mana that you really want to be able to get to, then having some run and sixes makes sense. So that's this this is the list I'm gonna be going off of. Let's take a look at the current metagame as it sits right now. And we got Heliod Company um, supplanting everything in at first place. I think this is probably the best deck in the format right now. We've got blue white control or at least blue white variants um, like Esper and Bant um, in at second and then Blitz and Burn were recently the one ones and twos and then it was ones and threes but now they're down to a three and four so still very good. I think Jun Shadow, a pretty solid fifth place. And then we've got all of our more uh, uh, classic offenders that we've come to know and love over the past like year or so, just in, in the uh, fifth through 15th, sorry, sixth through 15th slots, and Jun in at 10th, our hero. All right, so that's what we've got going there. And I guess the one, the one other comment that I want to make is um, it, it looks like Spike wanted to build um, his sideboard um, with more hosers. So like not a, little, not a lot of these cards have um, have uh, utility in different matchups. I think a good example of a card that is utility would be something like Collective Brutality, which I'm generally pretty high on. These cards are more things that when you bring them in in the matchup where they're specifically for, for example, Blight Beetle would be versus for the Heliod deck, they're going to be very, very good there and not very good pretty much everywhere else. So lots of hosers in the sideboard and fewer things that come in in a wider range of applications. So it is pretty late where I am, so let's just get this league uh, kicked off before before it gets uh, super super late and I have work tomorrow. So
We got one. Yep, and immediately we've got a pretty good one. We've got lots of ways to interact, some powerful planeswalkers and the good threat. All right, spirits. So I'm wondering if I want to just bolt this thing now or if I should cast Inquisition. Um, Ren and Six can take care of the Wanderer pretty handily. So I think I'm going to cast Inquisition. If they sacrifice it to force spike the Inquisition, so be it. Alright, they let it resolve. So I think I'm going to be taking Supreme Phantom here. Because that will mean that the Renin Six actually gets to take care of other Mausoleum Wanderer. Or sorry, the Wanderer in play. Because I don't want this pumping the Wanderer to uh, make it so I can't kill it. So I'll just, I'll just take the Lord here. They'll be able to attack down my Renin Six um, more likely than not. But I'm okay with that because I've got a backup. Selfless spirit, okay. It's another thing that Renin Six can kill. I still think the play here is probably just Renin Six kill a thing. This is an interesting draw because I was originally just gonna get Forest, but now since I have Liliana, this can pretty freely get basic swamp. So maybe I just shock this in and then use Renin Six to ping something. And I'll probably end up saving Bolt for Drogskull Captain. So let's pay two here, cast Ren and Six. And I think I just want to use every card in my hand as removal if I'm able to. So I'll play this Ren and Six here. And it's 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 pretty possible, in fact, I think likely that I should just kill the Mausoleum Wanderer. Um, because then I can't because then they won't be able to uh, or spike my bolt but if, if they play the drog skull captain and then i try to kill it they could sacrifice the selfless spirit in order to save it and i think that's a bigger disaster so i'll kill the spirit here um i'm still not super high on renin six um as i mentioned in the deck tech this is mainly a, a copied list from a recent uh set of leagues that aspiring spike played who's another streamer um and he was just playing he was playing he was playing the run and sixes so when i mostly copied his list i'm just doing what he did and i do think cards like run and six get better when you're playing stuff like season pyromancer which can fill your hand with uh, extra stuff that you don't necessarily use um like extra lands Right, so they didn't play Drog Skull. That's that's kind of curious. Um, I mean, I guess I should just lead on Ren and Six, ping the Mausoleum Wonder, and I guess that'll evoke whatever it is I'm worried about. If this works, I'll just be pretty happy. Oh, this is a Rattle Chains. Okay, so this is also a 2-1. Sure, right? I just say okay to this. Well, I mean, obviously I have to. Um, I could I could bolt this in response, but I think I'm just gonna play other Ren and Six and ping Rattle Chains, and then I can I can just hold up a Lightning Bolt. So other spirits will now have Flash, but we we know their hand, so like they can flash in a Mausoleum Wanderer, right? 
So I'm just gonna, I guess, kill this. They can't force spike it with any number of mausoleum wanderers. And this, this is, this is probably gonna be pretty good. I want to say. Oh, they targeted it itself. That's interesting. Well, I guess I'll, I'll just, I'll still just want to kill this. They can flash this in to save it, but that, that's fine. Like it's not what I wanted to happen, but I still get to use I still get to use a lightning bolt. So I'll I guess I'll actually I guess I I kind of did just mess that up, huh? I I have to use the bolt here, which I didn't think about. So not ideal, but doing fine. They're gonna have to send some number of stuff at the Ren and Six, or also just get to kill something anyway. All right, and their spirits do still have flash because they're rattle chains. So I'm just gonna let this happen, I guess. Sure. So yeah, there there must have been a way to play that better, but I'll just play it better going forward. All right, so let's get second black for sure, and I guess red. We've got two red already. It's blood crypt or overgrown tomb. It's probably just blood crypt. There's not really a reason to have lots of green ever. Do I want to shock this? No. Forgotten cave. Okay. So I can I can nurturing peatland play Liliana edict them, but then my bolt isn't good because they can they can force spike it really easily. That's gonna be the case almost no matter what, which is awkward. I guess what I'll do is they'll probably flash in drug skull captain and then I'll bolt it, um, with the triggers on the stack so they can't counter. All right, so I guess I'm gonna play land. And say go. Yeah, live it. it. The red and six, I think it's 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 in theory good, but it just hasn't performed how I've wanted it to. Do they have a? Oh, geez. All right. Well, they they've been drawing really really well, unfortunately. All right. Well, I kind of have to kill that. And uh, they, they can sacrifice both of their mausoleum wanderers to save it. I don't think that's what they're wanting to do, but they could. Alright, so this, this drog skull is going to give me the business. Yeah, and they could flash it. This rattle chains has been very bad for me. All right, let's cycle. See if we can find some action. And I can't use any spot removal on this stuff because then they'll just flash in drug skull in response. Do I want to pay a life here to uh, draw a card? Probably. I'm kind of dead anyway, right? Yeah, let's just draw the card. See if I can find action. Could have used it to gain three, but gaining three is not going to do much. All right, I'm confident packing it, packing it in here. Okay. Well, I'm glad I've got the plague engineers, huh? Uh, I guess another fatal push is in order. I'm not really, not really looking, looking, look like I want to play any of uh, the other stuff. I guess I could bring an bring an oof for aether vial. But that seems real narrow. This has a uh, reach, doesn't it? I mean, this isn't a thing they're easily able to get rid of, so it's entirely possible I should be playing Gargaroth. I mean, it's in the board for a reason, right? Let's try it out. I think I'm going to cut some Thought Seizes. Clothis is probably too slow here. It's nice for helping get to Gargaroth, which is cool. I, I think I'm going to cut the Kroxa. Pretty much all of their removal hits it, and they might be bringing in Grave Hate, which makes it even worse. Yeah, one of the things that Spike had said about Gargaroth is that it, it, a lot of the relevant removal in the format misses it. A few examples that he had used were um, things like... Um, uh, I always forget the name. The, the, one, the one white white, it's a 2-2. Two, two. You can like exile a thing that costs 4 or less. Um, that, that's a really big one to miss on it. 
Um, it can't be hit by Fatal Push was another example that was used. And uh, I guess Decay never hits it, but that one's far less common. Actually, let's uh, let's take out the Klings. These Klings don't seem like they're going to do actual anything. I guess I could take out a Blood Braid 2 if I really felt like I needed to. kind of don't feel like I need to. Yeah, why would I need to know the name of a white card? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess this is a keep. I guess I'll swamp on one, cast Inquisition. I could shock Blood Crypt, because that, that might better disguise the removal next turn. This is going to be shocked almost no matter what. So I kind of like doing it. The only thing is like if I draw like a black leaf cliffs or something, then I'm going to wish I just sequenced it a little different. I'll just play the swamp. Not overthink it too much. They're playing an unsettled mariner. That one's kind of scary. They've got mausoleum wonder, mausoleum wonder, spectral sailor, supreme phantom, unsettled mariner. This sand is quite good. I think I'm just going to take the mariner. That's the thing that's the most annoying. I've got my uh, cheapish removal for the first few uh, spirits. Here comes a wanderer. Makes some sense. We just want to find lands because we have we have the big stuff up at the top. All right. I mean that is that is technically a land. I guess I'm just gonna play the Baron more. Yeah, and I'll just probably fatal push something. Yeah. Let's let's just play our lands. Um, and they could have exactly rattle chains. And I am going to kill this. If I try to fatal push something, if they play something and I try to fatal push that, they'll just mausoleum wander to spike it. So they're just going to have, they just will have dealt an extra damage to me. It'll feel bad if, if they have exactly rattle chains is the one card I don't know. There's the supreme phantom. Yep, we can bolt that with the uh, blood crypt. So we, we want green sources pretty badly. That, that is a green source. So let's shock this. And I guess I just do it right now before they have the potential of drawing the rattle chains or something. So we get to Bloodbraid next turn, and if we hit another green source, we get to Gargaroth. That's pretty exciting. Yes. Another Phantom. Okay, so unless I've tracked their hand poorly... They've got another Wanderer and uh, a Sailor. Anyone in chat want to verify that? I know they've got two war Wanderers here. Well, that land cycles. It doesn't cast Gargaroth, so I mean, I'm, I'm just going to play Forest and Slam Bloodbraid, and I guess best case here is like a Liliana or something, just because it's, it's kind of a removal spell. All right, there's the Ren, but Ren doesn't actually kill anything on this board. I guess I get to attack. I can't exactly block. All right, and I guess I'll plus. All right, so green source next turn would be really, really big. Cause maybe Gargaroth can just take it, take us on its back. Seems big enough to do so. All right, so everything's done. All right, so I'm curious to see if they actually care about this run in six. All right, that's what they got. Yeah, they care. All right. Yeah, these these are some weird lands to have drawn, for sure. All right, we draw Inquisition as soon as it's dead. Feels bad. All right, let's cycle this now. This is this, this Forgotten Cave is never contributing to a Gargaroth. All right, and that one does contribute to a Gargaroth, so I'm just going to play this tapped, I guess. And I do have an attack, seeing as though I'm never, ever blocking. It's going to be interesting to see if this Gargaroth can uh, do some work. It's going to, it's gonna, for the most part, completely shut down the attacks. 
If they brick here, we could we could pull significantly ahead with this Gargaroth. It'll be interesting to see if we can get there. All right, and they're passing, which could mean anything, including they just want to activate this. Ooh, another Gargaroth. All right. Well, let, let's not be rude. Let, let's cast the one that's been in the hand longer. I mean, double Gargaroth is, is probably a way I could win this. This is pretty interesting. All right, I've got an attack. They could flash in a spirit, so maybe maybe I should have uh, a just attacked first. In fact, I definitely should have. Because if they've got like a spell queller or something, I'm letting them eat it for free. But I mean, I can't not attack, right? Feels bad. Okay, this is just draw a card. Sure, sure, sure. Got to tighten up. All right. Come on, Gargi. Shacklegeist. Oh no, they can tap my Gargaroth? Do I just die to them tapping my Gargaroth? Right? Tap two spirits, tap a creature you don't control. And the rattle chains. I think I'm dead with the Shacklegeist. Shacklegeist did it. Right? They can just tap the two sick things and then, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm more than dead. Darn. Needed, needed the land for it a turn earlier. GG. All right, let's do the next one. I mean, Gargaroth would have been good had we been able to hit it on time. And we had the Renin Six as well. We just didn't have the fetch land. Oh, well. That feels like it should be a pretty even matchup. They've got a lot of, a lot of tricky, flashy stuff. I think I played that first game pretty poorly, though, in all fairness. Let's go first. Uh, yeah, let's keep kind of an awkward one mana wise. I kind of have to get a blood crypt with this so that way I've got double red for pyromancer. I'll feel bad if they're playing a burn deck of some kind. They're playing Yorian. Okay, they're not playing burn. All right, so I can pretty, pretty happily just get the blood crypt here. Cast my thought seize. Ooh, it's the cord deck. Well, they've got two birds and a cord. I, gu I guess I just take the cord. If they had one bird, I'd probably take that without having any removal for it. But since they've got two and I already can't kill the first, I see no reason to uh, still take a bird. All right, we drew another land. Not great. I guess I'll just get in the tapped stomping ground so if I want a pyromancer I can although I'm almost definitely just casting Liliana to start working at the opponent's hands so maybe I should just get down the uh, overgrown tomb yeah I'll do that say go Mother, it's a bird yep would love to draw red insects. I'd probably just play that and start pinging off birds. They've got planes, planes, and two unknowns. Both. That's interesting. I think I still probably want to cast one of my three drops. And it should probably just be Liliana, discard basic forest, right? Like, I can bolt a bird, but, like, I guess they're going into a turn with five mana, which is a pretty significant amount, but I think getting Planeswalker down is, is still pretty good. The longer they're in play, the better. So I'll say yes to this. Play Liliana. Start going at the hand. I don't think Edicting Birds is exactly where I want to be. I mean, although I could Edict a bird, because then maybe I can load up another Edict, and then Bolt can kill other bird, and other Edict might be good. But I think I think going at the hand is is probably slightly better. Kind of close. All right, and we ate a planes. Cool. Go ahead.
Deputy. All right. Well, we can we can just bolt that and get our Liliana back if we so choose. So they still have the planes in hand. They played a land we didn't know about. Baron Moor. Baron Moor is interesting. I still think I, I probably want to just get the Liliana back, which means I'm never going to have the mana to seize Environmancer. So I should probably just cycle this first. Because like if I draw Goyf or something, or, or a Ren and Six, I'm, I'm almost definitely going to want to play it. So let's cycle a land. Not good. I think I probably want to play the Peatland over the Mire. If, I, if I'm going to pitch lands next turn, I think I want it to be the non-peatland because peatland cycles later I, mean, I, I could just pyromancer but then i'm losing the bolt which means i'm also losing liliana i don't think i'm willing to do that so let's let's just shoot this deputy now and then i can i can plus liliana we'll discard the mire and then play the peatland I guess there's there's some incentive to actually just play the Mire, because like this can get a red source, so if I Pyromancer into a red spell, I can hold it up. But it would be only Bolt, right? So maybe that just actually doesn't matter. Alright, and they paid they played Heath again. Okay, so they ditched they ditched planes. This might just be put a Yori onto hand. That's like their 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 worst possible play here. Hopefully we get a, a draw two off. They're not doing anything. Well, if they don't do anything, I'll even put Yorion in their hand. That could mean Cord. Do I want to sacrifice Peatland? Don't think I will because my hand's going to get dumped with the Pyromancer anyway. Ooh, that's cool. Don't think it's cool enough. I think I'm still just plusing Liliana and ditching it. Think, I think the, the draw two is going to be better for the interactive spells. I, I don't think we're going to have enough time for this to be good. Yeah, they are playing They are playing a, a pretty wacky mana base. That's true, Nostalgia. I'm wondering if maybe it actually is the Chord or like a company of some kind. And they're just like waiting to cast it. I mean, they, they would just cast it, right? Please don't be a cord. I mean, I, I'm, I'm guessing it is. Yeah, so I guess they cord for two. I guess two isn't the worst. Okay, maybe. Maybe it's just a company then. I mean, company is still really bad for me. Not a company. Restoration Angel, okay. That's bad for me too. I mean, it's a lot. I'm happy it's that other than like a cord or a company. I'll still discard Clothis. There's just no way that card's fast enough. Gotta get like a uh, push or something. There's the bolt. I was talking earlier about how it, the upside of having kept the mire would have been to be able to bolt, but bolt doesn't actually do anything here anyway. I imagine they're gonna smack a Liliana. Yeah. And now I now I might just cash Liliana in for for the edict. Yeah, they're not putting Yorion in the hand because then I would just plus plus it away. I'll say okay. Land. Not not exactly what I'm hoping for here. 
Um, they're just going to smack the Liliana down if I don't just cash it in now. So I guess I'll kill a bird when I can. And there's a non-zero chance they draw like a Kiki Jiki or something. They, they can use all their mana pretty effectively. I, I see no reason to bolt the other bird just because I've got a bolt that I have extra. Glyph's pretty thick at 6-7, right? It's pretty big. We get to attack with our bear. Who knows, maybe the bolt ends up going face. So, so now they'll, they'll probably feel pretty free to uh, put the Yori on in hand. Wall, that's annoying. It is but a, but a speed bump for our Tarmogoyf. But I mean, this this could come down to a racing situation. So, I mean, even you, even a little speed bump could be problematic. And they didn't take Yorian in their hand again. That's crazy. So if I sacrifice Catacombs, I go to 9, which has me, uh, which has, has me having a one turn shorter clock. It's probably fine. Like, it, it's not free. But uh, I do want to find some action. Taking a land out of the deck is not nothing. We got lots of green. Let's just get the marsh out. Don't want to draw the marsh. Trophy. Trophy is good. Um, I guess I'm just going to attack. I mean, had this been a decay, we wouldn't be able to hit Resto. So I'm thankful for that. And the, the, we're on turn 7, so I think this is usually the stage of the game where giving the opponent the land just really doesn't matter. Alright, they, they just blocked that for free, so I guess I won't attack. Although I guess I could attack if they block with wall, I can bolt it. Is that is that worth anything? We're killing Restoration Angel, but we're giving them a land with trophy. So between, between Yorian and the... Uh, between the six lands in play and the bird... There's still one short, so I guess they could actually draw a land and then cast Yorian. So giving them a land here actually is still relevant somehow. Yeah, I mean, this isn't doing much blocking, so I guess the attack is just free. Yeah, and I, I guess I will bolt it. I mean, they're going to seven here. Yeah, let's let's get it out of the way. I mean, even just reducing the number of blockers in play is going to make it easier for the Tarmogoyf to connect. And is there any reason to wait on the trophy? Probably not. I guess I could draw step it, but I don't want them to cord with it. Or like otherwise have protection. I guess getting the land is effectively not taking them off of any mana to cord, so I guess that's not actually a factor. Hey, KO Diamonds, thanks for the raid, I appreciate it, buddy. And Dylan MTG raiding with the party. Thanks, both of you, wow. Lots of people rushing in to watch some Jun. Pretty cool stuff. We, we lost uh, our first round to Blue White Spirits. We almost were able to stabilize with uh, Elder Gargaroth, but our opponent um, top decked a Shacklegeist and they could tap it down before we blocked. The opponent's still uh, not putting Yorian into their hand. They drew a click. Joke's on you. We just have land. <laughs> Good at the gangbang thing. This is a PG stream. Usually, at least. Alright, uh... Jam both, I suppose. So strange that they're not putting Yorian into their hand. Maybe they literally have just forgotten it exists. Oh, you guys raid the same people without coordinating? That's funny. Well, lucky me tonight, I suppose. And I guess for everyone who's just joining, because there's a pretty big handful of y'all, 
Um, this is this list that I'm playing here is like five or six card different, five or six cards different from a recent aspiring spike list. Um, the reason it's five or six card different is because I've got a cap of 430 tickets um, on my Mana Traders account, and I needed like 450 to get it all. So I, I took out some of the uh, the less expensive, less critical parts, and just put in some other stuff. Hey, we took a game. All right, so we're playing against a uh, five color, or not five color, four color Yorian. Could be five color. Um, none of these sideboard cards are looking super hot. One of the things I mentioned in the deck tech is that Spike seemed to like to put a bunch of aces in the sideboard and not a whole lot of things that got utility in a bunch of different places. Well, a lot of these are like for very specific matchups. So, I mean, I, I don't really think there's anything that's a slam dunk here. In fact, I might just resubmit. Maybe the only thing I could potentially see is like another copy of Fatal Push. I've already got three push, three bolts. I'm kind of liking just resubmitting, to be honest. Gargaroth is probably too slow. Let's just resubmit. Have a good one, KO. Thanks for the raid again. And have a good night, Dylan. You as well. Thank you. Yeah, not having cards that are somewhat versatile on the sideboard makes me a little nervous. But I mean, aces are good too. Like a lot of the time, if you see them in the matchups where they're good, you're gonna just win. You're gonna at least get like another ten percentage points, which is pretty significant. Gargaroth, I think, is probably the most versatile card on the sideboard. It just comes in like, I guess, versus the aggro stuff and the uh, the mid range you control. But I mean, being five mana makes it kind of kind of iffy against aggro, right? Five, five, five lands is a lot of lands to have, especially early. Yeah, his hand's probably fine. Got some ways to interact. Got some some powerful creatures. Let's keep. Hope everyone coming from uh, Dylan's and, and KO's stream is having a good night so far. They've got the turn one accelerant. Icky. Alright, well Blackleaf Cliffs is a good draw. We, we needed lands in general and Blackleaf Cliffs makes it a little easier. What you got? Another Hierarch, a Cord, and a Bird. Well, this is looking a lot like my uh, game one decision. Let's just take the Cord again. It's the only unique piece. In, they, they're gonna have a lot of acceleration, but I don't really have ways to deal with the acceleration right now So it's kind of just a moot point to try to deal with it with an I okay Is you a wall keep on accelerating Let's play out all of the things And one of these birds is gonna attack for two next turn pretty menacing stuff. All right, I guess I'm playing Tarmogoyf. I don't wanna. I don't wanna get Basic Forest if possible because that doesn't escape Kroxa. I could. I, I could just play Kroxa now to hit the land, but they've still got like infinite mana. I should probably just get a, get some kind of clock going. So I want to max out on red because of the Pyromancer. So this is looking like Stomping Ground here. Stomping Ground. Tarmogoyf. We're one power away from punching through this wall. Come at me, bird. You won't. Well, you won't. Okay. Do they draw a cord? That that could be a reason for, for not having uh, done anything here. I mean, I don't have a play better than Croaks. I guess I could Pyromancer and try to cycle through some stuff. If I if I ditch Croaks, I could escape it next turn, and I also grow the Goyf for putting Creature in the yard, which could open up an attack. 
If they've found the core, it's going to just be unfortunate, but there's not much I can do about it. It would have been the card they drew for turn. So I guess I'll play Swamp, Ditch, Kroxa, and a land. It doesn't matter which land. Um, it's not Verdant because I need that to fuel the Kroxa next turn. And I guess I can play Swamp now. I saved the most life by ditching Blood Crypt. So let's go Swamp, Pyromancer. It's going to resolve, makes some sense. Let's ditch the Kroxa and ditch the Blood Crypt. Make a thing. Push is a good one. Nervous of Cord, but I'm not going to play around one card that I don't know about. I mean, it, it's it's pretty likely to be a Cord or something flashy because they didn't put Yorian in their hand. They did forget about Yorian last game, so maybe they just continue forgetting. All right, they've gone to blocks. Cool. So I guess it's not a Cord, or at least they're waiting. Alright, I'm going to be one off of escaping next turn. That's pretty close. Oh, it is a cord. Bummer. I mean, what do they get here? It's the only card in their hand, so unless they, like... If they get, like, a Restoration Angel, for example, they'd have to top deck the Kiki, but they're even short on top decking Kiki, right? Because they had double red. Do I think Plague Engineer is better than Clothis? Completely possible. In fact, I might bring it in. That's a good idea. I feel like Spike makes a deck, everyone plays it, then he makes a deck to beat his old deck. I, I haven't I haven't really followed a lot of streamers for long enough to know the pattern, but uh, that, that's funny if that's the pattern. Vanifar, okay. So I guess we know what's up now. So I think I'm just dead. If they're playing that version of Vanifar, I don't know if this is just like a value town creature, but I, I think this means I'm dead. They just get a bunch of things that start on tapping everything and then eventually they like work up to some some kind of combo. So yeah, def definitely going to bring in um, the Plague Engineers, I believe. What we're, I want to see what the actual kill condition is, because that, that could actually affect how I want to board. As soon as they demonstrate that they can kill me, I will just concede. Yeah, I, I, I believe as long as you can untap with a Vanifar, um, they win. I know like Vanifar plus one drop usually kills. Kiki, yeah, untap. Uh, oh, they they just make infinite quarter monitors now, right? Okay, that that's the kill. All right, so with more information, we could bring in the plague engineers now. We could, I guess, name the uh, the whatever the corridor monitor is. Let's bring in another fatal push. That's probably about it. Clothus is looking really really slow. Sub chaos. And I think these clings are also on the weak side. There's just there just isn't a single card that they particularly care about out of their own yard. <laughs> yeah, this is this is this is pretty late for me. Um it's it's near midnight where I am. It's past midnight where I am, actually. Scratch that. Um, this hand is slowish, but I think I'll keep. If they've got only one accelerant, this thought is can be pretty powerful because it could hopefully get Liliana to edict onto an empty board. And Liliana getting out onto an empty board, especially against the opponent who has Mulligan, which they have, can be pretty powerful. Well, we'll need to find a clock, but that's about the only thing we're missing. Alright, so they've got. Witness, Ooze, Eldamri's Call, Breaching Hippocamp, and a Wall. So they have no Accelerant. Weird as it may sound, I think I want to take the Wall of Blossoms. Um, I really don't want to Edict to Wall of Blossoms with Liliana. Eternal Witness is also pretty problematic, though. 
It, it's got to be either witness or wall here. I, I think it's probably just uh, it's probably just witness, right? Witness is gonna do a pretty good job at two for oneing, whereas wall at least isn't a, a real threat. I think it's pretty close between the two. I'm not. I'm, I don't think it's any of the others. The sideboard is spicy. Yep, it's just pretty much whatever Spike did. I'm just trying it out. Inquisition. All right, that's a good pickup. Um, is the one card I don't know about in your 80 card deck a Veil of Summer? <laughs> it isn't. Sick. All right, so they've drawn a land. All right, so they did keep a one lander and they hit it. I guess now I'll take the wall. Liliana can take care of the ooze pretty handily. I'm afraid of the Eladomri's call, but I think I'm just going to have to cross that bridge when we get there. They might just not even play the uh, Scavenging Ooze because Eladomri's call is, is a better play in the face of potential removal because you, you won't have wasted your entire turn playing something that just dies. So they might actually want to just hold up the Eladomri's call. Which is probably what I would do. Yeah, and they are. Makes some scary sense to me. Alright, so I guess we'll get Stomping around here. And then I can get Overgrown Tomb to complete the Tron. I guess I actually probably want to get more red. I guess now now it matters less. I'll get, I'll get a, a Shockland here. And since I've got the Forest in hand, the Verdant is just the worst fetch. Um... Yeah, let's just Blood Crypt here, cast a Liliana, and I'll I'll, I'll ditch the uh, I'll I'll ditch the uh, the forest probably. I think I, I like having the fetch lands because uh, when you play them and sacrifice them, it, it it adds another card in your yard, which is relevant for Kroxa, and also like I may need the fetch for revolting fatal pushes. And Liliana's going to do a pretty good job of edicting whatever they do. I guess uh, that's a little bit more awkward. I mean, I can just use this Liliana to edict it and then just continue plussing the other one when it enters. The, their ooze is going to maybe get to stick around, though, which is worrisome. So we want to find action. Any action. That is action. I think I, think I just want a Liliana plus... Uh, Liliana, Liliana minus get this Liliana back plus that one, and then I'll ditch the uh, the land in my hand. Minus target you. Then I'll keep the new one. Plus that. Ditch a land. So there you go. Should a uh, next level then fetch tap land on my turn too? You're saying like with the mire? I mean, I fetched every I fetched uh, every turn, right? Hey, we won! Sick. Yeah, Liliana is a pretty good lock piece. <laughs> yeah, no, no tutor. Tutor into Bailoth would have been pretty pretty dangerous i mean they we they'd already used the tutor we don't know that they play bail off although I get, i'm assuming it's it's actually likely right so i have not updated the deck in um what's it called uh stream decker but uh here's the list for those uh just joining i guess you only got a brief look at it i'll, I'll get it updated uh in a few moments It'll, it'll definitely be up to, updated by a uh, time of upload. Uh, for all those for those who are new here, um, all of my recordings get uploaded to my YouTube channel. So if you ever uh, wanted to see a Jund League or even some of my extras, it's all it's all my YouTube, all of my uh, social media info is right here under my fat head. This is the seventieth recorded Jund League, so there are at least seventy leagues of just Jund already uploaded. Plus extras. Keep. So I'm going to go Blood Crypt on one and cast Inquisition. 
Unless they, like, play a creature that I'm super concerned about, obviously, and then I'll bolt it. Is this the mirror of some kind? It looks like the mirror. Could still be a shadow variant. I'm going to assume they're taking the Inquisition here. I left the wheels open. He didn't play ooze because of bolt push. We won anyway, though. You're, you're typing on a PS5? Oh, well, uh, huh. Subtle brags. I haven't even tried to get one yet. I'll get around to it eventually. Land the girl. Oh yeah, I mean they they have to reveal the creature. Um, I guess you're saying like they 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 they, they Eladarmi is called with only two mana in play. So yeah, they they could have gotten the uh, the Dayloth, but I had I had second Liliana as as some worst case insurance. So this is a two three, but there's no instant in the yard. So this this does not work out the way I want it to. Let's just get a blood crypt and untap. I I might just double bolt this thing. If I find red, if I find land at all. Alright, well, I mean, that's a castable, so let's cast it. Sorry, a shadow? No, they're just, it looks like they're just regular Jun. So we've got a mirror. Our hand's good versus the mirror, assuming we don't just die. Um, I, I think I do want to just take Bloodbraid. If they find lands, Bloodbraid is going to be really, really powerful. These, these bolts are going to be good at winning a race. But if I can find a black land untapped, I can kill this this Tarmogoyf, which would basically stop all of their pressure. So I think I still like taking Thoughtseize there, even though it's the card they're the farthest from casting. If we get to that stage of the game, with which we're likely to, I think Bloodbraid is going to be the hardest thing to beat by a lot. Oh, use the PS5 to watch me? Sick. That's cool. Oh, my foot's asleep. Black Source, please. Not quite. I mean, we could we could just cycle it now, and I think I will. They've they've got two lands in their yard, so red and six a red and six from the opponent is gonna be good no matter what. I guess I still still take a land. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. Not quite. Just throwing bolts upstairs, getting aggro with it. <laughs> Five hundred bucks just to watch Twitch. Hey, for for like a hundred times fewer, you could have subscribed for a month. For for a hundred times less, you could have subscribed for a month. You could have subscribed for a hundred months for that price. If you account for tax, even more months. Yeah, I mean we kept we kept the two lander with castables. I I think I'm supposed to keep this hand every time. We just haven't hit a third one, which I mean it happens. It's unfortunate. I mean we're playing twenty four lands and three run and sixes, so we we had many good draws. All right, now now Liliana isn't good, so this is looking like a lost cause. But we get two more games. I mean, that, that, I guess, kills Tarmogoyf. What, what, Chaos? Do PS5s um, uh, show 4K images? I don't actually know. It's a genuine question. Sub when you can for kids to feed. I, I appreciate anything. It, it's it's never ever asked for or required. I just just appreciate it. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm I'm just playing Ren and Six because this is a list that I'm basically copying. It goes up to eight K. Wow, that's pretty good. All right. Well, not that them playing Ren and Six was was any any surprise, but they're also playing Ren and Six, which is probably another card I'm not going to be able to beat. 
We're not out of it yet if we find the land here. And of course, fate doesn't like us, so here's a tap land. I mean, I, I get to bolt the season, Pyromancer. Um, going down to three. And then if I can clear if I can clear the other elemental with other bolt, that's possible Liliana can take care of Kroxa, but this is all assuming the opponent finds like literally nothing else. Right, let's kill this. I mean we we get to uh Pyromancer of our own on the turn coming up. Sure. I'd be really, really surprised if if I came back from this, but I mean, it's not impossible. I mean, we're gonna make some blockers with this uh, pyromancer here. They're at nine. There's, there's, there's a reasonable chance we we can do it. We drew a swamp as well. Um, I, I think I'm just making elementals here. Maybe, maybe I need the bolt for this elemental. But I mean, I'm not going to have the red anyway. I think I'm just going to make the bodies and then hope to draw some blood braids or something. And besides, the lands are actually useful because they can maybe help us uh, exile these pyromancers. So I guess I'll uh, play this first. Maybe I draw a land I want to have enter tapped. And I think I will just ditch the Liliana Bolt. Maybe I save the Bolt because that could potentially go face and it's a way to steal the game. But I think I want to make the blockers. I guess Kroxa is another consideration. Like maybe I need to keep a spell to discard to it. But the odds I draw a spell are pretty high. Alright, I did draw a spell. Do I want to go down to two? I mean, I'm going to need these lands in play to, uh, to exile the Pyromancers anyway. So I guess here's the land. PS5 looks like an Elon Musk spaceship. I've seen pictures of it. I, I just don't have one. So as soon as they hit untapped non-basic forest land, they get to escape Kroxa. Which is going to have me in a world of trouble because I've left this elemental alive. If I sacrifice the Bloodstained Mire, I go to 2. I can, I can attack all and put the opponent within burn range. And then still be able to dig a hit for 1. But I mean, I'll be able to activate the Pyromancer, so that's probably just something I'm interested in. Um, let's get more red, more black. I guess I'm just getting another Blood Crypt. I'll have only Basic Forest as a green source, but that just seems fine. Actually, I'm only playing one Blood Crypt, what am I talking about? Alright, so I definitely want more red, so we'll get Stomping Ground given we've already got the Swamp. Seems fine. Come on, deck. Push is, push is real interesting. In fact, I think I should probably just push this elemental and attack. No, that, that's got to be incorrect. I, I'm going to need this fatal push to kill the Kroxa. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play this swamp, play on, on uh, Exiling Season Pyromancer for more tokens, and then I'll ditch the Liliana to the Kroxa that the opponent casts from the yard if they escape it. Perhaps just cling the Kroxa. I can do that, but I think I'm winning a game where they where they where they escape the Kroxa, funny enough. Like if they draw land blood braid here, I could just die to the haste damage. Whereas like leaving up seasoned Pyromancer lets me live. I guess like exiling the Kroxa lets me um gain three life, right? But I mean, if I exile Season Pyromancer tokens, I have outs to just killing my opponent. So I think I think I like just doing this. So like, because if the opponent casts the Croaks here, I just dish the Liliana. I can still activate Pyromancer, and then even if they get Croaks into play, I still have outs to just killing them. So I think I like uh, letting them use their turn to cast the card that doesn't do anything against me right now. Yeah, I'm gonna play to win as opposed to play to stay alive. All right, now I'm even happier. That I'm exiling Pyromancer because I'm gonna need a clock. And they just continue to brick. All right. Can we draw a bolt? Not quite. 
All right, so I think this is gonna be pretty similar. Just hold up more uh, Seasoned Pyromancer activations. And then if they play Croaksa, I'll just ditch Liliana. If they if they find something hasty or like they find the bolt, then I can use the escape on the cling to to buffer my life. But I mean if they draw if they draw like a bolt or something, they're just gonna hold it and make me react. So this this could be the Croaksa. They'd have to get basic mountain, they can't shock here. Cling Croaksa sounds sexy to you, Yag. I mean, I, I think clinging the Kroxa is the line that um, has me trying to stay alive as opposed to just winning, or uh, trying to win. All right, so they found the Blood Braid. That's dangerous. They found Kroxa with the Blood Braid. That is fine. So I think we're actually coming up with a W here because we, we can just uh, use the, um, the Pyromancer to block. And the Pyromancer is, is known information as well. So uh, I'm going to ditch the Liliana here. So yep, we got the W. Sick. Didn't think I was winning that game after missing so many lands. All right, Elder Gargroth seems like it's going to be a powerhouse in the mirror. <laughs> uh, Plague Engineer is going to be pretty fine for killing the opponent's elementals. Nostalgia, thanks for the cheer. I appreciate it. Um, Spellbomb also probably fine, and Push Push is probably better than Lightning Bolt. Both can kill creatures and the like, so, um, uh, and can kill plane, can finish off Planeswalkers, but killing killing Goyf and Croaks I think is probably more important. Um, let's take out all of the discard. Discard is traditionally very bad in, in mirrors. You just don't want to draw them late. And this is, this is a clean 60. Let's run it. Yeah. The mana situation is a bit awkward. We've got Pyromancer, we've got Liliana, and we've got one of our aces, so it's it's pretty hard to get away from this. So I mean I'm just not gonna get away from it. Smoldering Marsh is is a pretty weird inclusion in my opinion. Again, it's something that Aspiring Spike did, so I'm trying it out. The opponent is mulligan, which is a pretty big advantage in the mirror to have not mulligan. And I'm probably just gonna play Smoldering Marsh tapped on on turn one. I could play Black Leaf Cliffs to hold up Fatal Push, but I don't have like a, a good two drop that I want to hit anyway. And I don't have a two drop of my own. So I mean the odds that I'm gonna be punished by this are pretty low. I, I think hitting my lands untapped is gonna be pretty important. So I'm gonna play my tap lands early when they're not guaranteed to like do anything meaningful. Ooh, Dark Confidant is very good in the mirror. It's bad versus Ren and Six, but we don't have it. All right, we can we continue drawing the funky lands. I'm I'm definitely killing this Bob, no question about it. Um, and then which tap lands do I want to play? Um, both tap lands enable me to play Liliana. I guess I think Red is probably more important long run because we've got lots of Pyromancers. So I'll pay the play the cave with the intention of probably cycling Baron more at some point. Other genders got the notice. I don't want to say that like I started it, but I haven't noticed people play Bob until I've been like really suggesting it. I mean, obviously, like I'm just one person. My my outreach is not that far, but uh, I think Bob is probably worth it. Please play. Oh my, this is this is really good for me. Like they they could have a blood braid to attack down the Liliana, but using Liliana to Edict just always feels so good. 
So I'm gonna hope they just they, they they they're gonna be able to pretty easily deal with this Liliana. But if they have if they have to use a resource to get rid of the Liliana after it's already traded, then that's that's just plus side. So like Bloodbraid would be the nightmare scenario as far as dealing with the Liliana is concerned. Is this like a Clothus of your own? You have a little Clothus battle. I mean, I don't have the green. Oh yeah, that does it. So they got the Bob back, which is the scarier card. All right, I mean that 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 deals with it pretty easily, but uh, we don't actually have the requisite lands. I think I'm just going to pyromancer here in an attempt to dig for the lands because I really want to hit this run in six next turn. Um, I think I'm just going to ditch probably other pyromancer, and maybe it's just the Baron more. I think spell bomb is going to be pretty important for dealing with Kroxa, but I mean we do have Clothis for a similar reason. I really don't think this Baron Moor is is gonna convert to anything meaningful. Like I don't, I'm not really gonna have time to set to use mana to uh, to play it and then or or to cycle it. I'm gonna use all my mana. I think I think I'm just gonna hit the Baron Moor, get my one token, try to find a green source, and we do. <laughs> and we also find uh, the the big daddy, huh? Go. <laughs> I'm, I'm not familiar with all of the uh, emote um, talk, but uh, I'm assuming that's an emote. <laughs> all right, there's the Bob. We get to we get to just run and six it. Um, if we draw a green source, it'll be interesting if we want a Gargaroth, but we didn't draw a green source, so this this gets much easier. Um, let's just let's just kill the Dark Confidant. We won't be able to cast anything else, but uh, we, we can just hold up a spell bomb activation. Yeah, I, I do think Dark Confidant is very strong in the mirror in the absence of exactly Renin 6. I, I think if, assuming assuming either is going to live, I think Dark Confidant will outperform the Renin 6 in the mirror. That said, I think the Bob in specifically the mirror is more fragile. In most other matchups, I prefer the Bob to the Ren and Six. Bloodbraid time. Mm-hmm. They hit a spell bomb of their own. Alright, I mean that's that's annoying, but it's it's better for me than if they'd hit like another creature or something. And I think I will use the spell bomb to attempt to Hail Mary kill the Bloodbraid and save the Run and Six. I mean, having the Run and Six live is pretty valuable, right? If they kill the Run and Six, it'll be unfortunate, but I don't think the end of the world. <laughs> Our lands continue to be less than ideal. I mean, we're going to get to uh, Clothis coming up, and that, that feels like big game. Unless we draw a green source, then I'm just casting Gargaroth. <laughs> wow, this this deck really, really has a thing for me today. And am I attacking? I feel like an attack is probably worth it. We're we're kind of racing, except I'm the one with the Clothis. They can use the spell bomb to uh, to stymie the. Uh, the the triggers but i mean it's gonna trigger and be good hopefully at some point hey and it's also two devotion towards clothis huh huh pretty good we've got a lot of our aces but uh single green source is definitely being awkward this this timing is a little strange to me because they could have countered one act one one trigger of this um, but I mean, I guess I guess in the grand scheme of things, it's not gonna matter a whole lot because like I I just target a thing and then they could pop it, unless they're trying to hit something here specific. I mean, Gargaroth has looked pretty good in pretty much every spot we've seen it in so far. Maybe Spike is onto something. This card, I take this card pretty highly in Vintage Cube. It it does some work versus a lot of the aggro decks. All right, Liliana, pretty weak in the face of Seasoned Firemancer. All right, and we're obviously going to ditch a Black Leaf Cliffs. 
This also opens up the uh, the possibility of I could always just target a land with my Clothis in order to make the green, but we can wait to see what we draw to make that decision. I might still want to just do that because I can also shock the stomping ground to hold up an assassin's trophy and I think that's actually probably worth it, right? This is gonna make our sixth mana. We can shock up to seven, so we can we can we can hold up the uh, trophy and play the Gargaroth. That seems good. So this is gonna make green. All right, and then we can cast the Gargaroth. Thonk. Did you hear that hit the table? Um. And I think if I attack. The Liliana, I could get it. I can get a block because maybe they want to be able to get some edicts in, and then I could just trophy the Liliana. So I think this was a missed sequence. I should have. I should have definitely waited. It gets a little hard. I'd have to shock first and play. Uh, I I wanted to use the mana, so I would have had to have trophy the Liliana first. So I guess it's actually not a missed sequence. It's just the timing is a little strange. All right, so let's let's attack the Liliana. If they don't want to trade, then fine. If if they do trade, I'll still just trophy the Liliana. If the Liliana takes the hit, I won't trophy it yet. If they want to edict it, edict me just to get rid of an elemental, then then ha and then I'm happy. If they if they want a plus, then I can just respond with the trophy, and they will have discarded a card, and I effectively didn't. So yeah, I mean push push never gonna touch the Gargaroth. So hopefully hopefully they just can't kill it. There's a push. Um, I guess if they if they're able to kill another thing, then this Liliana could potentially edict the Gargaroth. Like if they if they minus here and then in response kill something, I could get blown out. So I think I want to just kill this now to prevent them edicting and then killing my Pyromancer with it on the stack because that that would be the way that my Gargaroth dies, and I want to avoid that. Yeah, I like your line too. I, I like. I agree with you, Joseph. I, I think we we want to keep the Gargaroth alive for sure. So let's just do it in response. All right, and it was actually gonna it was actually gonna feel bad. They have another Liliana. Oh wow. Okay. So I mean, they they had the nuts to kind of deal with it here, which is unfortunate. I mean, we we still have a Clothis, which does outrace the Bloodbraid Elf. And we, we still have a seasoned Pyromancer in our graveyard. So, I mean, we're, we're doing okay for ourselves, despite the opponent kind of having it all. What do we draw? A land. Not great. Um, I guess I'll just hit the Spell Bomb to make Tarmoglyph smaller. And then, is there any reason to wait? I mean, I, I guess waiting is kind of free. Yes, I am from Florida. Oh, you've seen me at Cool Stuff tournaments. That's cool. Yeah, I haven't played out of Cool Stuff in a in a hot minute since I since I moved away for school. So that, you you must have seen me like what six years ago. Yeah, I mean I, I learned to play basically at Cool Stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you want to just like post something random and tag me so I can recognize your face. I'm really bad with names, but uh, I'm pretty good with faces. Joe, oh yes, I, I I remember your name. I remember your name. I can't say I can put a face on it, but I do know that name. All right, so uh, Pyromancer time. Any reason to fetch? I think I'm gonna keep the fetch around. It, it could come up that I want to uh, have revolt. Plague Engineer, that's interesting. All right, so let's uh, hit their Liliana. I don't want to hit the lands because I want this to actually do some draining. And I think I will attack into the Bloodbraid. I don't know that they block um, if I show them the Plague Engineer. So let's just throw two at the Liliana, and then if they block, which I'm assuming they will, we can then name Elf with the Engineer.
going to Destin in May and Keys in September. Yeah, I've been to. The, I I had an uncle who lived there. He I think recently moved though. Yeah, the the Jun players are. Uh, it's it's like a it's like a cult, you know. Every everyone knows each other because we all know each other's pain, and that that pain is just playing Jun, <laughs> Elf. Goyf is dangerous, but I mean this Clothis is is gonna continue to to do the good work. And again, I'll leave the mire around. Who knows? The life could come up. Hey, that's pretty good. Um, let's go for the attack on Liliana now. I I don't think there's a way this could bite me. Like I I could probably just play the Gargaroth and be safe. This obviously has death touch, so if they want to save the Liliana, they have to trade. Yeah, Clothis is uh, quite the house. And I think second Gargoth should just about seal it here as if Clothis didn't already. This, this list is uh, almost a, a direct copy of a recent aspiring spike list. So this is not necessarily what I would do, but uh, it's at least something different to shake it up from what I would usually do. And maybe aspiring spike is on to something and uh, Gargaroth is just worth a slot or two or three because there are three there are three here. But yeah, they're, they're hell bent. We should we should pretty much just have this locked. Oh and uh, in, in case in case we weren't winning by enough, Here's uh, another three for one. Let's just put it even farther out of reach. I mean, I know they're dead anyway. Yoink. What do we want to do here? Let's uh, let's uh, make a three three. The, the opponent has extended the GG, so I think I think we're we're taking it down. Yeah, making a three 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 makes sense. There, there's some argument too, I suppose. Like if the opponent like could play a damnation or something, maybe having drawn a card would be better, just because it's not another thing that gets swept by the damnation. But like we've got insurance against that too, because Clothis just exists and is indestructible for some reason. Sea of treats. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. I'm gonna I'm gonna look you up uh, and see if I can put a face to your name. Always draw a card with green Jace. Yeah, it feels like that's almost always the right thing to do. I mean, but making three threes is good too. Ooh, we got a match. Cool. Let us go first. Yeah. Oh, Joe Herrera. Is your is your username um at Joe and then T R U U U? As I I definitely recognize that face. That's you. Oh, sweet. So fun fact. Uh, I, 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 I've, I've for sure played you, um, I think it was like, I'm pretty sure it was round three of a GP. We were both two and O oh. and, uh, speaking of this hand, okay, I'm going to take the Ren. So we were both two and O oh, and, uh, I was, uh, we went, we got, we went to game three in the Jundmir and you mulligans to five and you were really down about it, but it's okay. Cause you won anyway. <laughs> Let's just do it again. Don't know, don't know if you uh, remember that specific match, but I sure do because I felt on top of the world. It's like, yeah, I'm about to be three zero in this big event, and then I lost. I was like, oh crap. <laughs> All right, remand is the most concerning in the face of this Liliana, so I guess I'm just gonna take the remand, and then I'll 
just hold up a cling to dust or I guess guess to guess get a stomping ground at the opponent's end step. Yeah, I mean winning on five cards is not impossible. It it, it involved a uh, top deck. Uh, I think it was like back to back blood braids ended up pulling you ahead. But I mean, I mean it, it happens, right? It just so happened that you hit you you. It was me on the opposite end of the beating stick that match. Yeah, mulling, mulling in the in the mirror definitely does feel awful for sure, for sure. But yeah, I, I know exactly who you are. So hi. <laughs> Um, Joe had Hazaret. I don't think I remember a Hazaret in that match, but it's possible. I definitely remember a top decked Blood Braid because you know when you're in a when you're in a jungle mirror, top deck Blood Braids are mortifying. So I, I I remember them. All right, and they've got a they've got a Fatal Push. They don't actually have the black mana. They could grow Spiral into playing a black mana. So I'm just gonna jam the Liliana here. And I'll, I'll pay the life here. I don't think my life total is going to super come up. And I'll just ditch the Verdant. You ran Hazard before? I, I ran Hazard too uh, a while ago. I, I don't think I ever ran Hazard for more than like a month. They found a Force. Brutal. But they didn't find the land for the Growth Spiral. So win, win, lose, lose. Um, I tried Hazaret and Jund uh, a hot minute ago. I don't think I ever streamed with Hazaret and Jund. I think that was before my streaming days. All right. Well, they found they found the Triome to uh, hit the the Goyf. Unfortunately, they're gonna be able to hit the Goyf at some point, no matter what. Double click is kind of nice. I don't want to just throw the Goyf into a removal spell, but I think I'm gonna do it on the basis that they've got two removal spells, so it's gonna happen at some point anyway. And I'll just start cycling these clings. Yeah, man, I, I also cannot wait until GPs are back. Cannot wait. They continue to miss lands, which is good. Let's say no here, and I'll just pay the life to cycle this on probably remand. It's the best Snapcaster target if they're playing that kind of thing. Yeah, the, the the first the first GP that happens, I I've I've already saved up some money. The first GP that's like safe to go to, I'm buying a plane ticket, not even a question. I've I've never I've never uh, been on a plane to a GP. I've been on a plane tons of times, but I've never like gone out of my way to like buying a plane buying a play buy a plane ticket to go to any Magic events. The only the, actually that's a lie. I went to one Magic event via plane, but that was a. Uh, a reg a uh, uh, invitational a Star City Games invitational um, in Virginia. Uh, you thought organized play was still a crap show? Um, well, I mean GPS and stuff are, are still really fun. They're still really straightforward. A, a, lo a lot of the the draw to things like GPS are that there there are lots of like side attractions. Like you don't have to go for main event. In fact, for as far as GPS are concerned, I almost never go for the main event. I usually I usually get like some kind of challenge badge. All right, let's keep on cycling. I guess let's take this Snapcaster target. Croxa, that's a good one. Yeah, I mean Ren, Ren and Six is powerful in the decks where you really care about hitting your land drops. I don't think that's every deck though. All right, so Croxa time. And they have, they do have the answer for the Kroxa, but we can re-escape the Kroxa, which is super nice. And this is at least going to take care of some cards on the way out. They used this push, my bad. Did they use that Growth Spiral too? Yeah, I just haven't been tracking their hand very well. That's my bad. They, dis they ditched the trophy. Okay, that's only a little concerning. Drawn a lot of lands here, but I mean we've had some cyclers, which is nice. They're they're also just still bricking, which is good. Uh, let's get the tomb. All right, so we're only we're only with left with base six, which is fine. Inquisition. That's actually a pretty good hit because if they've got a remand or something, this is gonna help us push us th push it through so the croaks they can at least enter. If you go to a GP, it's for the main event. Yeah, I've done GPs for the main events before. <laughs> cool. 
I, I've been I've been fortunate as far as uh, main events are concerned. In, in the like three or four main events that I've done, um, I've I've always day twoed, which is which is a good feeling. All right, so we're playing against uh, some kind of run and six control deck. Uh, I'm gonna want the one spell bomb. Don't think about the engineers. Let's let's bring in the Gargaroths again though. If this thing sticks and can get into combat even once, it seems like it's gonna be pretty good. Uh, pushes pushes look like they're gonna be on the weak side here. I mean everything else looks pretty manageable. I think I'm just gonna cut a bolt. Like I think the hand disruption is actually pretty useful versus the control deck, but maybe maybe this is too much hand disruption. So I could see cutting one. Bolts, bolts can at least finish off planeswalkers and stuff, right? Um, I I owe you a GP experience. Well, if we ever go to the same GP, definitely say hi. Uh, you think when paper cards come back, paper value will double? I don't think it'll double. I think it'll it'll go up a little bit. It's like gas prices, right? It's like gas was three dollars, then people stopped traveling, so it went down to like what, like two, like two twenty-five at its lowest near me, and now people are traveling again, so it's back up a little bit. It's not the only reason it's gone back up a little bit, but it's definitely a contributing factor. Yeah, I mean, uh, the the idea with putting red and six in like the multicolor deck is like if 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 you get the uh, red and six down early, then all of your other mana situations are kind of solved. This could be a mistake taking on an Inquisition over a Bolt, but I think I'll leave in the Bolt. And then I, I can definitely see just wanting the Inquisition as opposed to the Bolt. Do I board Oof versus Heliod? I don't think that I should. This hand is not exciting, but I'll keep it. We've got the Ren and Six. If it sticks, great. Yeah, I mean, what, what does it stop out of Heliod? Nothing, right? Uh, it stops Ballista, right? But they, they've got so many ways to deal with it that I, I don't think it's worth it. Alright, so let's get second black. I guess just get Overgrown Tomb. Well, we've got a lot of Tarmogoyfs. I'm not casting Tarmogoyf, I'm casting Red and Six. This could get Force of Negation, which would essentially, essentially be a time lock. But if it doesn't, it's great. And also, Goyf is much easier to kill. Oops. A push is also kind of like a time lock. Yeah, the Blight, the Blight Beetle um, is, is pretty much only there for the Heliod matchup, which is the number one meta represented deck right now. And I also think the pretty clear, the pretty clear best deck. All right, well, we, we don't want to keep on drawing lands. I'll, I'll still play the Mire over the Black Leaf Cliffs just so I can continue getting some some value. And then this all, I guess, gets Stomping Ground. I'll say no. Let's just immediately buy this back. Then play a Tarmogoyf. So not going great here. Is that resolved, though? Okay. I mean, they could just bolt this. Yeah, I, I really don't think the, uh, like, they really don't need Ballista to kill to kill Jund, right? Because we don't have any infinite combos. I, I think the Ballista part of the combo is just really there for the decks that, like, actually have combos that also go infinite. Bloodbraid is a really powerful draw. I'm going to continue fetching to continue getting Ren and Six value, I think. Um... I think I want to max on red sources for seasoned pyromancer potential. So let's just say yes. Buy it back. And cast the Brady Gal. <laughs> we hit a cling. Not great. 4 mana 3 2 haste to draw a card. Of course we've hit a land. Not Not very good. I don't know what the opponent's doing here, but it's not great. You know what we're doing isn't that great either. If we if we get lucky enough to pop off an emblem, it'll hopefully be good, but uh, unlikely that actually happens. Is this a cryptic like counterbalance? Yeah, brutal. 
We get to attack for three now. Joke's on you. Discarding cards is pretty bad here. Let's just ditch the uh, black leaf cliffs. Search for Ascanta. We've got a trophy for that. Not the kind of thing I was hoping to have had the trophy. Inquisition's a solid pickup, though. We get, we're going to be able to uh, sneak this run and six back in. Maybe trophy this if we have to. Oh, they have Veil. Well, I guess if I'm killing the search, I'm going to have to respond. And I do think I want to kill the search. Because if it flips and they can clear my board, that's going to be really difficult to beat. So let's trophy this in response. Hopefully they don't have second Veil, which they don't. Cool. We'll draw a card, brutal. And uh, I guess let's attack. Hopefully they don't have, I guess they can't push now. And I think, I think I'm gonna wanna continue pressuring the opponent even in the face of a push. So I think deploying a second attacker is smart here. If they've got a leak, it's gonna be unfortunate no matter what. All right, well remand is less bad for me, but still pretty annoying. Yeah, you'd play a second Glyph as well. Yeah, I, I I like I like deploying the extra pressure. Cause like a, a single push make a single push or any other removal spell for that matter would give them lots of extra time. And this this is the kind of deck I don't want to give time. Uh oh. You had a hardened skills player who was salty about the popularity of Blight Beetle. That's pretty funny. All right, well, I think we're officially in the bone zone. I can I can triple Tarmogoyf here, which I kind of feel like I have to do, right? Here's the first one. Here's the second one. If they've got like a wrath of some kind, it's gonna be pretty bad. All right, that's not a wrath. It also disguises the third one. All right, go. We gotta get a little lucky here. Imagine if they had Uro though. If they had Uro, we'd just be dead on the spot. Pretty, pretty, pretty strange. They got their field of ruins. We've just drawn all of our basics, pretty much. All right. Well, when they end step in response, like tap all of their lands. There's no way that's a good sign. Okay, that's less bad. I guess they're gonna do it again and realize we're out. Crater Wow, thank you for the follow. I really appreciate it. Welcome to the Jundra Dome. We're out of lands, you got me. Alright, so we're at five sixes. They've gotta do something. So I mean onus is on them. I guess I uh, attack first and make them make them act. I mean, obviously a block would, would do it. So maybe I run in six just to like ping it and get it out of the way. Do we have any more fetchable green? We don't. I, I still think I'm applying max pressure. It makes them, it makes them need to find more. I could, I could try to run in six here by back a land, but if they counter the run in six, it gets really bad for me. I guess if they're going to counter the run, they could just as easily counter Termoglyph. The, I think the only case that's not true in is Force of Negation. I guess this also opens me up to getting mana leaked. Like if I go Ren and Six into Goyf, I could get mana leaked. So it's like, what do I want to play around more, Force or mana leak? If I want to play around mana leak more, I would just lead on Goyf. If I want to play around Force more, I well, I guess either either way is leading on Goyf, right? Because like Force counters this, but not Goyf, and this also going first means I can't get leaked. Yeah, I've, I've convinced myself. I'm I'm obviously overextending into like a damnation or some some uh, other sweeper. So we've got stomping ground overgrown. I guess there's still I guess here's a blood crypt. We've only got one other overgrown tomb in the deck. So I guess there is a green source left that I could get. Red and six the face. Yeah, it's it's looking likely. I think I'm just gonna play this and hold up the cling to dust though. Future snapcasters could be pretty problematic. Ren and Six might be better saved as a surprise as opposed to something like on board that they, ha that they can factor into how they play. 
Because, like, I, I think the only way they climb back into this now is um, either a sweeper or some kind of uh, cryptic shenanigans where they can, like, just buy themselves enough time to find something substantial. Like, if they play, like, a shark typhoon, like, hard cast, and then just, like, go off with some spells, that could be a way we lose. And I'm, I'm imagining this is a shark typhoon deck. So I think I, th I think going wide is, is still the correct strategy, especially when any single threat is lethal on its own. All right, and they are out of uh, field of uh, ruins. Mystical teachings, geez. All right, well, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get a window to cling that unless they give me a window. The real nexus. Uh oh. Nexus. So if I eat this in response, they can just flash it back. Oh, is this this is infinite, isn't it? This is this is kind of infinite. They're we're, we're, they're one mana off of not being infinite because they just flash this back in response. I guess if they only have one Nexus in their deck and we force them to do this now, maybe they don't draw it. So I think now is the time to do this. Oh, I guess I could get Smoldering Marsh too, but I think I went second green. So yeah, hope, hopefully there's only like one Nexus in the deck, and this means they don't they're not able to like read tutor for it. Don't think it particularly matters. I guess if I I, I want to keep my green sources. I'm not playing any uh Kolagons commands, so I guess let's just get rid of two lands. Do it this way. So I know they can do it in response. I won't draw the card, but I just really don't want them to go infinite here. Yep. They revealed mystical teachings with mystical teachings. Nice. I guess that mystical teachings can get Nexus again, and then, then it is kind of infinite. Pulse of Snapcaster. Yeah, I feel like we're dead now. This this gets Nexus again? Yeah. Um, there was not a window to cling Nexus because they, they already had the six mana available. Also, Nexus never goes to the yard. Uh, I, guess, I guess that was the more of the question. Because it, it, has a, the, it has a replacement effect. So it never, never actually goes to the yard. But yeah, this this is just infinite. They can, I guess that's not infinite, right? Like mystical teachings only goes so far, right? It's it's not infinite. It's it's finite, but it's very powerful. Yeah. This is one of the cards where, like, it wasn't standard with uh, what Wilderness Wreck, right? And that's one of, one of the bigger complaints at the time was that you, you could essentially, like, it wasn't literally deterministic, but it was it was essentially deterministic. Like, you had to, you had to like, win the lottery in reverse to, to lose after you have the loop going. Because, like, you also had, like, stuff like Search for Ascanta that would help you dig multiple times a turn for multiple times a turn for another nexus because you would also play more than one nexus but yeah i mean th these teachings aren't literally free like they're gonna have to find their kill condition blue sun zenith that's fun i mean i guess they only have one wreck in place so maybe they can't kill me with the zenith maybe they have to target themselves to keep going Pretty interesting kill condition, though. Let's make sure they can actually do it, because I don't think it's... It, it's not determined yet, but it's it's getting real close. Like, all of their... All of the cards they need to keep going would have to be in, like, the bottom ten, but it's possible. In the meantime, this is kind of fun watching them do the thing. Go to cleanup. How unlucky. You have to discard cards. We still know they've got a Snapcaster in hand, too. So, I mean, I, I feel like we can't win. We got a turn. That's exciting. So, we're, we're short of killing. But, I mean, let's, I guess, go for an attack of some kind. 
If they try to do something at my end step, maybe I can just kill them. Yeah, I think we're toast. This is cryptic. Yep, tap draw. We get to Renin 6 here. Joke's on you. This could very easily get forced. It doesn't, though. Um, do I just go at their face? Yeah, it's got their face. Who knows? Oh, I should have played my mountain, but I don't think it's very relevant. You don't like watching the solitaire? I mean, it's not, like, determined yet, so I'll keep on playing it. Cycle, yeah. Uh-huh. Here, I'll just yield. They'll tap all of their lands. I mean, eventually, I'm assuming the kill is literally just blue sun. They'll, they'll probably blue sun me for an amount at some point. They're kind of close to within burn range, so I could also just draw some burn spells and maybe surprise them. We're at like a percent to win, I think. All right, pulse, pulse is gonna make it much harder. All right, let, let's just scoop. I think we're well below a percent now. All right, so we, we know the kill condition though, so that's good. Um, does it change anything? I think uh, we didn't really see many Planeswalkers at all, so Inquisition probably actually just better than the Bolt. I don't think we want Engineer for like Snapcaster or something silly. Let's just submit. Let's go first. Yeah, Sand is acceptable. We've, we've got the turn 2 Ren and 6. So they'd have to have like they'd have to have like a snare or a force of negation in order to counter it, and even then we've got a backup, and then maybe these run and sixes buy off, buy us enough lands to either make our pyromancer good and our uh, our gargaroth good. So I mean this hand's got some good potential if we can get the run and six to stick, especially early. Sphere tax them enough. Well, like the I think the issue with that is um, they take extra turns, right? And the tax just resets at the end of each turn. So like they don't actually they don't actually cast like five or more spells in a turn. They only cast like two or three. And they shocked. So that that could pretty easily indicate uh, a spell snare, but I'm not gonna play around it. Especially because I've got a second one. This could also just be like an opt or something. Looking for a, uh, a forest, perhaps. Did you find it? You did not find it. That's big. I mean, we've, we've got a backup, so it wouldn't have been a tragedy, but I'm still pretty happy you don't have to use the next turn on it as well. Decay is interesting. I think I'm going to use this turn to cast using Pyromancer. In the event it gets countered like Remanded, I, I think I'm going to want to fetch to be able to get some value with the Run and Six guaranteed. Let's get the stomping ground say yes buy this back now because why not i'm probably gonna pitch two lands to the uh, pyromancer maybe convert it into something meaningful all right and there's the remand so i'm happy that i used a fetch and say go i suppose Run in six of your own. I've got a decay for that. And it looks like we may all... This would, this would be a good time to sneak in a Pyromancer, but I think decaying their run in six may be more important. And we, having drawn Tarmogoyf, that makes me even more want to just decay their thing. Because uh, we, we've got something else to do with our mana on top of it, which is a good feeling. They're not bolting me out or anything, so that's good. Let's let's I guess lead on the Tarmogoyf. The decay is uncounterable, so I can pretty pretty safely do that after the goyf. Give them the least information. Maybe they're worried to spell snare something. So let's I guess get blood crypt. Say yes. 
Also, I definitely want to do this now before they can Veil of Summer me, right? Veil of Summer is a card that exists for some reason. Force this. Sure. Please be digging for force and then try to force this. That would be epic. Alright, and they, they bottomed with the scry, by the way. They had seven cards. That's a lot of cards. There's the wilderness wreck. Dangerous. More lands, not what we wanted. We're, we're not far from an ultimate. This is only a 2-3 right now. They could bolt it, which is kind of hilarious. I think I'm going to attack first, try to evoke some kind of action so maybe I can stick a Gargaroth. And I guess I cast Pyromancer first. If they go counter bounce like Ren and Six, I'll be sad, but I can just recast the Ren and Six and still get value off of it. So, I guess let's just tap like this and cross fingers. I could just go for the Gargaroth, but I think this is probably a little bit better. Like any counter, just like severely bones. Yeah, that's that's fine. And we could just play a forest and recast it. I guess I didn't. I I I said I was gonna still get the value off it, but I ended up not playing a fetch anyway. That's my bad. Just plus it and say go. Not feeling ahead. Definitely feeling behind here. Gargaroth, if it can stick, would be great. But they, they they're still pretty loaded. Yeah, I mean I could have fetched it to put a land in the yard, which is what I was referring to. Basics are pretty bad draws, especially because of the field cycle. Okay. We're at 4-5 now, and they're at 12. Okay. Got something else? Hey, that's a combo with Ren and Six. Thoughtseize, that's a good one. Let's buy this back before we put another, another anything on the stack. And I think I'm actually going to want to save this for next turn, because that, that might be what helps me sneak the uh, Gargaroth through. And I could just play the Mountain... And then plan on um, exiling Pyromancer from my yard at the end step just as an additional source of pressure. I doubt this actually connects. Oh, it did. Okay, you're at eight. You're at eight. That's uh, pretty good, I guess. I mean, we, we might just start running six going at the face to deal a few extra points. Mystical teachings. All right. We're, we're in the danger zone. Are they gonna start trying to go for it? Blue Sun, they got Blue Sun now, okay. I guess they get to Blue Sun for like nine, 11 now. Another wreck, oh, they get to do it for a lot more. gonna dump it all yep blue sun for seven yeah do, do they just have the nexus already we might just die if they have nexus all right they don't all right let's exile pyromancer It does take a creature out of the yard, but it's two additional attacking points, so it's still probably worth it. Discard a Triome. Okay. So... This is three, four, five. I can ping for six. I'm short. I could I could minus here. And then play other N and six minus again. Which would, which would actually also add a type. Actually, no, not true. They have N and six already. There's no sorcery in the yard yet. I should probably just lead on Thoughtseize if that's the case. It'll be awkward if their card is cryptic, if, if they have cryptic though. 
So maybe I just lead on an attack and then do this afterwards. Sorcery. If sorcery is added, that makes this attack for six. So it's still still one short. It, uh, it's so likely they have cryptic. I think I'm just going to attack first. Like, I, I doubt I actually get to connect. Sure. Like, I can hope they're flooded, but, I mean, they, they just did some tutoring, so... I doubt it works. No way. Alright, I guess I thought sees now. See what's up because I sure as hell don't know what is. Bail, that makes sense, unfortunately. I guess I just go at face. I mean, I could cycle cave and replay and just continue drawing cards, but they're so low. I think I, I think I'm just gonna go for the reach damage. I could slam Gargaroth, but that, that that doesn't that doesn't change the fact that I'm still dead to some number of them just combo so to some amount of them comboing off. I think I'm going face, but I guess I could cycle cave first to make the decision right after. Like if I find bolt or something, it gets interesting all of a sudden. Not quite. Is it still better to just draw cards as opposed to pinging them? I have the exact same outs if, if they can stop future attacks. So I think buying back the land is buying back the cave is, is still probably better. They don't have a land. I mean we we're buying this land back. I mean they don't have a land? I mean like in their hand they don't have a land? They played a land every turn. I think I want to buy this back because that, that makes bolts a really interesting draw. And it keeps all of our outs the same. Like putting them to two I don't think is a lot different than three. I could cast Kroxa. Don't think I will though. Yeah, like if I if I cast Kroxa and they they have just any spell, which you gotta imagine they do, then it, it's not super effective. Search for Escanta is dangerous. What's up, the last god? How you doing? All right, so uh, here comes some wilderness reclamation stuff. You're okay. That's good. Resolves. I mean, we we know they've got the mystical teachings, right? Do I just go for the cycle now and try to hit like a lightning bolt? I mean, I think I'm gonna try to hit a lightning bolt. Excuse me. Bolt would be best. There are two. Resolves. All right, I think they're like semi finite again. Looks like we're gonna come up a little short. So they have two turns coming up. We already know that they've got the uh, blue sun zenith. This thing is gonna flip. So yeah, th this is this is effectively deterministic. They're like one percent to brick, but uh, I'm just gonna keep on yielding, and then if they find it, excellent. Because like they're they're gonna get they're gonna get um essentially they get to look at thirteen cards every turn just off of draw step and the wilderness rex to find another one. And they're 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 getting so few on cards in their deck that it's almost impossible to miss. As soon as they find like the first couple copies, I'll just scoop it. And they've already found a few. Show show me one more and I'll scoop. Or if like show me the ability to get one more and I'll scoop. Sure. GG's. Alright, we got one more. Hope everyone's got a uh, a good a good has has a, a good night or evening or morning going. Got a pretty decent crowd uh, here tonight or tonight for me. So 
Thanks everyone for hanging out with me. Had some pretty big raids earlier, which I definitely appreciate. Here's the deck for everyone uh, recently joining. This is a, a, a mostly an aspiring spike list. Aspiring Spike is another streamer who, in my opinion, is really good. Um, he he's a big brewer, and he recently took up Jund. Um, and this is very similar to what he did. And the the only differences that exist exist because I've got a Mana Trader's um, cap of 430 tickets. Romario, Romario Vidal, Vidal, thank you for the follow, I really appreciate it. So yeah, I, I was like 20 to 30 tickets over, so I just took out a few things and changed it for stuff that I owned because the ticket limit was too high. So like, for, for example, he was playing two trophies, I'm playing a Decay because I own a Decay. He was playing four season Pyromancer, but Pyromancer is like 40 ticks. So I cut one of those. And he was also playing a split of three Thought Seeds, three Inquisition. I own four Inquisition and two Thought Seas, so I made that change too. <laughs> yeah, I think Nexus is also not the most uh, the most exciting design. You open a set of THB from a chest today, so I have a second. You have a second Colossus to run now. Cool. Yeah, Colossus is is cool. I mean, I, I think it's very good when you want to see it, but there are a few matchups where it, I think it's just gonna be too slow. A lot of the time, but I mean, if the format is slow, then I mean, I think it's good. I mean, it is kind of slow now, right? There's a lot, lots of mid range and uh, and control in the ranks. It's good versus burn too, but I think probably pretty bad against prowess. I think it's probably too weak versus like Heliod as well. Like the the combo deck set really doesn't shine a whole lot. Playing against Bench Summer. Oof, this is a strange one. Definitely gonna ship. If this were like a black leaf cliffs, maybe I keep it, because then any fetch makes the hand insane. This hand's actually quite good though. Let's keep this. Um I think I'm gonna bottom if if the opponent has a, a hand disruption spell and they can take our Ren and Six, this hand gets much weaker. But I think the hand is so good if I can stick Ren and Six on two. That I should probably just bin a fetch land given that I've got another one. And I can get Overgrown Tomb and then have Mountain for Ren and Six. Then we're off to the races with our Planeswalkers. Oh darn, they're going to take the Ren and Six. Brutal. I mean, the ha this hand's still just fine. I could have probably kept double fetch because Mountain doesn't cast Decay. I kept Mountain because if we're against like an aggro deck, there's just something to be said about having a less painful mana base. But I mean, the, the discard spell is definitely a bummer. Let's tomb, say yes, and see what you've got going. Is it another mirror, I wonder? It is not a mirror. It's a Jun something or other mirror, but they're playing Tide Hollow Sculler. Lily, Lily, Sculler, Sculler. Um, strange. So they can't actually Sculler next turn. They can't Liliana next turn either, obviously. I think I'm still just going to take the Lilianas. We've got the removal for the Scullers. Like, everything in our hand kills creatures, so I think Liliana is just going to be the most powerful thing that I'm worried about. I already don't have an answer for her, for first Liliana, assuming a Scholar takes my Decay. So I, I think I think I want to take second Liliana, given that the first one's going to be enough of a headache. It's four color shadow. You saw this this person earlier. All right, well, we, we hit a good land. This lets us hold up Decay. I think I should just play it. It's it's a card that the opponent doesn't know about, but uh, I want to be able to hold up a removal spell easily. They don't. I guess they don't know about the push either, so I could pretty easily hold that up too, but I think I want to... I probably actually want to use the push first, right? Because uh, the Decay can target Liliana. So them taking the card and giving the card back are two separate abilities. 
So I have to let this resolve or else my card is just going to stay gone forever. But yeah, I, I like being able to hold up both removal spells because if they scholar me and then take one of the removal spells, I can use the other removal spell to kill the scholar. He saw the lane with Bobble, that is true. Yeah, not shocking stomping around could could also mean not shadow. I mean, they also know my hand is is chock full of removal. So it, it's it's completely possible that uh they're just not expecting the shadow plan to be great here. Is it possible I just want to untap, play Mountain Liliana, and just, like, kill that? I think I actually do, because then when they Liliana plus or just Skuller me again, I can use the removal spell and continue plusing the Liliana. Like, if I Abrupt Decay this, I don't actually have an answer to their Liliana. So I think, I think I'm just going to, like, play Mountain and uh, Edict the Skuller. And then when I eventually get around to discarding, I'll just ditch the Swamp. Hopefully one of the cards I don't know about isn't a Bolt. That would be about the only thing I'm worried about. And push is good. Scholar again. Yep. Surprise, surprise. We knew about that one. They also had double black, so prioritizing the Liliana. Prioritizing protecting the Liliana. Maybe. Cool swamp. Ooh, we drew Inquisition. So I guess I get to just dump my hand here, which is pretty fortunate. Um, I actually, I have to play swamp first, right? Yeah, I have to play Swamp first till my mana works out. So let's cast this. Cool, we get to take the Liliana, leave you with the land. We can then decay this. Actually, I guess I guess I'm gonna be discarding a card no matter what. But I, I think I think it's worth it to discard the push if I can keep the Liliana on two. Like this is gonna kill their next thing anyway. So feeling good. I mean, we're in a top deck war with the Liliana on two. Um, don't uptick. I think I think I want to uptick because like push isn't gonna kill everything, and but Liliana will. L having Liliana on on three, I think, is pretty valuable. Like the 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 way I get punished is if they draw a burn spell. Yeah, I mean they they do only have a land in hand, but I think Liliana going up is is pretty valuable. Look, now Liliana is two removal spells. I mean, I could have also just waited and would have been two removal spells later as well. I wonder if they're playing uh, like Niv to Light. There's, there's no way with these spells, right? Not a good draw. Please no whammies, Goyf. Well, that gets eaten by a Liliana. Not drawn super well. I'll keep this land in hand in case I want a sandbag or removal spell this time around. Oop, dropped my phone. Look at that. Look at that value. Yeah, who needs German? You can just draw all the lands. This is accurate. Alright, now I do think I want to continue plusing and I can sandbag that push. Darn. Alright, well, I mean, at least we're both drawing pretty light. Come on, deck. Okay. That's a live one. They kept the card in hand. Maybe it's a removal spell. Blood Braid. Gonna keep on plussing. <laughs> We're just both drawing all of the discard. I mean, discard is not what you want to be drawing here. We could ultimate, but I don't think that's worth a whole lot. I think I'm just going to keep on plussing. sick all right so we, we drew we both drew pretty poorly but we drew slightly less poorly all right so i'm not sure what they're doing we we saw 
Tarmogoyf, so maybe that's the reason to bring in Push and, like, take out a Bolt. Gargaroth also looks like it's going to be fine here just because, like, they're a mid-range deck, right? So what am I taking out? I mean, I guess we, we saw we saw that the uh, the discard spells looked really, really silly in the top deck war. I would like to take out the other three, but is there anything I want to bring in for it? I guess I guess Spellbomb is probably worth more than an Inquisition. In fact, maybe Other Bolt is just better than an Inquisition. This leaves us with one in the deck. I think one Inquisition is probably going to be better than like first Plague Engineer. That could be wrong, but I mean, I'll leave in the one. I'm going to draw it late game and feel really sad, but uh, I'll, I'll just be sad when it happens. I, I gotta leave in. I gotta leave in some outs despite myself, you know. Not really. I shouldn't do that, but. Ooh. Double cling. Sure. So maybe they're just four color mid range. Maybe they're playing tribal flames. That'd be cool. Have I tried to unravel the aether as a sideboard card? I've had it as a sideboard card twice. I've yet to see it. So have I tried it? Yes. Have I tried it? No. <laughs> um, Verdant go. Do you like your top card? Yes, you do. <laughs> there's, there's no way I should be playing around Blood Moon, right? Nah, there's no way. All right, so Goyf is not boltable. Um, it is Liliana-able. I mean, I've got the bolt to finish there, Liliana. It's kind of accepting a two for one, but I mean, it's kind of hard to not play the Goyf. I, I could just hold up a Kling. Yeah, I mean, the issue with, with not having discard spells is that uh, it's really hard to, to know when the coast is clear, but I still think it's probably better to not have the discard as opposed to uh, top decking him in the late game as we both liked to do last game. Bolt it, I dare you. Bolt it, I dare you. Okay, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they've got black, red, blue. They've got black, red, green, white. They're only missing blue. Third bobble, wow. They're looking at their card. I mean, if they don't somehow have a Liliana here and I can get my own Liliana going, that could be powerful. Bummer. All right, well, no one's going to have a hand pretty soon. Let's ditch a cling. Push. Not great. I see your Liliana. And raise you a Liliana. Um, let's ditch, I guess, the cling again. And then when they plus, I'll probably just ditch my land. Varols with scavenge. Okay. Oh, this explains why you saw Death Shadow. Whoever said that. They're just trying to scavenge it to give give whatever they want. Plus thirteen. Plus thirteen. And you can sack a creature to regenerate. Interesting. So we're playing. We're up against a brew. Cool one. Took our bolt. Yeah, sure. Obviously ditching the non-spell card. Alright, and we're, we're gonna go into a top deck war again. Uh, they should have definitely taken the fatal push, right? Because now I get to get my bolt back and then I can I can shoot their Liliana before before plussing. That feels like a mistake from the opponent. Yeah, because like if if they take the if they take the push, 
In order to kill the thing, I either have to minus the Liliana or bolt it, and then the push doesn't tag the Liliana. But the bolt does. Wow. That is a good one. How do we how do we feel about that one? We're also uh at ultimate range. They're gonna have to draw two cards here. Miss K, Kanye West's wife. <laughs> Asymmetrical, discard a card. Yeah, I mean, you don't wanna be drawing your hand disruption. That's why I like taking him out. Another Liliana. That's actually pretty good because now, now I can maybe ultimate them and then just play another Liliana. I mean, it's gonna be basically a stone rain or kill your Liliana. I mean, let's let's do it. They could have a veil, but I haven't cast a black spell yet, so at least they won't cantrip. Yeah, I'm thinking just lands and Lily, cause like if I go like land Lily, they're just gonna take they're just gonna take the Lily pile. So this this will kill their Liliana, and then I can just continue plusing a new one. Oh, they kept the Liliana. That's interesting. Maybe that's a misclick, but that feels like it's got to be wrong. They drew another Thoughtseize. You do not want to draw these. <laughs> yeah, I think they also misclicked. They're trolling? Uh, maybe. Uh, hey, we drew our one Inquisition. I told you I would want to doubt myself at some point. We did it. This could have been a, uh, what, a bolt? Or it was going to be a Plague Engineer, right? Yeah, I plan on clinging something, for sure. They hit a land, how lucky. I mean, they're, they're on ultimate first. Let's cling something. Let's, let's cling something that will actually draw us a card, which means non-creature. Um, oh, let's, let's not exile other cling. That would be a mistake. I don't think it matters a whole lot otherwise. Haha, <laughs> we get to play a Gargaroth. But we also drew a Blood Braid. How unlucky. I think I just have to play the Blood Braid to uh, keep the opponent off of ultimate, which is kind of unfortunate. You drew the Gargaroth, can't even play it. How unlucky. We just get to kill their Liliana. All right, they, they've had enough. They were at eight, I could have gone after them. That puts us that puts us off of killing them. All right, so we uh, ended up with the three, two. O overall, a pretty okay result. Yeah, I I'm aware Clothis can make mana, but I, I still think Bloodbraid was the correct play because like Liliana is maybe a way they could get it back into it with, with some good split plus a top deck. Who knows? But I mean, yeah, Gargaroth we really didn't need. I think I just wanted to hit that Liliana there. All right, so let's do a quick deck tech slash wrap up for purposes of the recording, which is going on my YouTube. First, I want to thank everyone for coming in tonight, um, but don't leave quite yet. Um, after the deck tech, I'm going to be sticking around for a little bit to talk some Jund. Um, and if you uh, aren't already subscribed to me on my YouTube, you definitely should. All my information is right down below my head. All of these leagues get uploaded to my YouTube channel where... Uh, I guess the, I already said everything's on my YouTube channel. Um, so things like this, this is league number 70. So there are already 69 other leagues already uploaded and uh, plus some extras. I got like probably like 80 ish, 80 ish leagues of, of, of other stuff also uploaded. So if you like John content or modern content in general, my YouTube channel is the place to be. And if you're not already following me here on Twitch, you definitely should. Cause I do this a lot, three or four times a week. So anyway, the deck tech. So again, this is mostly an aspiring spike list. Um, the few changes that I had made, uh, I'm playing a Decay over second trophy. I'm playing a 4-2 split of Inquisition to Thought Season instead of a 3-3. Three three. Um, and I am playing a third Bloodbraid Elf instead of a fourth season Pyromancer. 
in the sideboard spike was playing another clothis um and was also playing fourth copy of thoughtseize instead of those two i'm playing two copies of plague engineer and there was another difference which i'm not remembering off the top of my head but i have a nile spell bomb um instead uh, i'm i was pretty skeptical about the sideboard just because lots of these cards seem to be aces like for example blight beetle obviously has a very specific purpose damping sphere has a very specific purpose collector roof has a very specific purpose to an extent the same can be said about plague engineer um, and fatal push gargaroth i think was the, the the thing i was most interested in trying out and i think it did pretty well uh, we, we brought it in i think four of the five matchups we stuck it in two and uh it was it was pretty good in general it was it was at least a must answer threat and in the at matchups where it wasn't answered which is, it's pretty hard to do because it dodges a lot of the relevant removal it, it kind of just won the game on its own so i mean if this thing enters combat ever you're pretty likely to uh at least stabilize if not pull ahead so gargoth i think is definitely pretty interesting five mana is a lot of mana but it, it's it's definitely manageable playing 24 lands and being able to leverage the extra land drops that Ren and Six allows. So I think if I if I'm not playing if I'm not playing Ren and Six, I, I'm definitely not playing Gargaroth. But Gargaroth I think is another is an, is another pretty good reason to play the Ren and Six. And along along similar lines, I think Clothis is very good in some matchups and just way too slow in others. But the ability to make mana and curve into the bigger stuff or just have enough mana to double spell stuff like blood braid or any of your threes paired with ones or threes and twos or really any combination M making lots of, of land drops with things like run and six and just extra mana incidentally with things like clothis can, can definitely come in handy if you're not just eating them away with the clothis as we did and i think two of our matchups clothis was quite good um so yeah in, in general i i dislike things like seasoned pyromancer clothis and uh and uh run and six when the meta is is more combo heavy um, or even even um, aggro heavy, but if the meta is going to slow down, which I think it has a considerable amount and just be mostly mid-range and control mirrors, then then these, these cards can be quite excellent and I think deserve a spot. So I, I think this is a pretty smart list um, for, for how modern is, is looking, at least right now. Um, if, if, the, if the meta shifts around, which uh, it just might with Modern Horizons 2 coming out pretty soon, um, spoiler season not quite started yet, but if, if the meta ever shifts, or shifts around to become more combo heavy or more aggro heavy, um, I, I can definitely see this list changing uh, a lot. So that's going to be it for this recording. Thanks all for tuning in on the YouTube, and until next time, Jundam out.